So YouTube, team keep it clean. Ravens have certainly been busy this afternoon, to say the less. Um, appreciate y'all, and again, like I always say, if, if there was ever anything that I missed, y'all always be sure to let me know about it. Because anytime Ravens even, even if they smell like they're about to make a move, we get a lot of DMs. A lot of notifications from y'all, so I appreciate y'all. Team Keep It Clean is literally the best team. The best team ever. Uh, so I love y'all. Anyway, um, I, I kind of waited a little bit. Sorry that the video was so late, but I, I wanted to wait because I didn't want to have to. Well, you know I would if I needed to. It, it ain't no big deal, but I didn't want to have to make video after video after video after video after video. After video, after video, after video. Anyway, um, I, I wanted to wait until we got some clarification on everything that was going to be going on. Everything. Um, and Ravens made quite a bit of moves. So, let's talk about the guys that uh, they are going to be releasing first. Um, well, first, uh, let me get this name right again. Ufambu, Ufamba Kamalu. Ufamba Kamalu, they're releasing him. Uh, he was from the Patriots practice squad. So he was only on the team for a few games. Um, and then they are putting Dalen Mack. This is redshirting him. It's ending his uh, rookie year. Um, shout out to Dalen Mack, though, because he made the, he made the team. Um, he made the team as a rookie, as in a, a fifth-round draft pick. Um, but this, this ends his season. Um, so next year. Next year he'll get a shot. Uh, we don't know what the status of Michael Pierce is. And I'm, I'm not, ta not even talking about for the next game. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But we don't even know what the status of Michael Pierce is for next year with this team yet. And, of course, I mean, it's way too early because we're not in next year yet. We're not at free agency yet. So we'll see how things go with that. But Michael Pierce, uh, he, sh he got to show it. His value went up just that much more in this past game. Why, you ask? How, how can somebody's value go up if they're not even playing? Well, that's the thing. Michael Pierce out. Ravens good run defense. Went out the window with him, too. Um, so it, it shows you how valuable of an asset both he and Brandon Williams are, especially when they're together. Now, money talks, and you can't keep everybody. You can't pay everybody. But anyway, Michael Pierce value, uh, it, it, I don't want to say skyrocketed, but it, it definitely went up significantly. So anyway. Ufama Kamalu, he's cut, waived, released, whatever you want to call it. Um, Dalen Mack, he goes to injured reserve. And the last move, Cyrus Jones. Cyrus Jones was released. And with Cyrus Jones being released, it's just crazy how what got him here got him uh, out of here too uh, with the Ravens. Every time, man, I think about the fumbles. I, I guess it's just it's when Ravens and Patriots get together. It's something. I, I, I think he just he feels that game. Like, he feels that game even more. Well, obviously, even more than we do as fans because he's actually playing in it. But it's something about that game. It's something about that game to where that's where he doesn't show what he can do. And his his... I can't even say his worst trait because... A trait is something that's developed. It's a characteristic of yours. And while he's been on the Ravens, that hasn't been a characteristic of his with the fumbling. It hasn't been something that we've been used to because he hasn't done it. He is not a fumbler with the Ravens. As a return man, he wasn't, wasn't a fumbler. So with, with Cyrus Jones and these Ravens-Patriots games, I don't know what, it, what brings it out, but that's where he just seems to fumble. Because it takes me back to years ago when we played them on Monday Night Football. And that, he ended up, when he was on the Patriots, he ended up being the only reason the Ravens weren't blown out of the water that game. is because he fumbled twice. And Ravens were able to recover and score touchdowns off of it. So that kept him alive. And in, in this past game, uh, two weeks ago, uh, against the, the Ravens and the Patriots, Cyrus Jones, he fumbled. And if you fumble, then that's, that's, uh, that's an easy way to get into John, John Harbaugh's doghouse. Um, and an easy way to, uh, yeah, to be, to be released. We've seen it multiple times. Um, and not even just off of fumbles, but just off of um, in the special teams game. Especially in a return game. Uh, even, if, even besides the fumbling. Even if you're just not making anything happen, uh, then that's, a, that's another way to get released. Now, 
Um, I I didn't know what the moves were going to be that were made in order to clear up these roster spots. I thought that Chris Moore, he might have been a possibility. Um, I thought Cyrus Jones, I didn't think they were going to release him, though. I thought they were going to put him to IR. So the releases, it was a little, little bit surprising, not too surprising, though. Uh, because Cyrus Jones was somebody that I was lobbying for this offseason. And I was excited for him because I'm like, yes, come on, Ravens. Y'all got to keep him. Y'all got to keep him because he will give us something in a return game. He will give us consistency in a return game because we haven't had that since the Jacoby Jones. And that was years ago. The, to, for us having a, a, a good punt return or a kick return, a good return, man, that's something that we just hadn't had in a long time. So I was like, ah, we got to keep Cyrus Jones. And I was so happy when they kept him. Because last year, he showed, he showed some nice little spurts here and there, um, some nice returns, and he didn't turn the ball over. That was a big thing, too. So I was happy about that, and I was glad that he got a chance this year to show his stuff. But then this year, while he didn't turn the ball over until the Patriots game, but even before then, while he didn't turn the ball over, uh, we just didn't get to really see anything. We didn't get to see any good returns. And, and now, it may not be all on Cyrus Jones now. Uh, because the Ravens, uh, they lost their special teams coordinator, Jerry Rossberg, because he wanted to retire, to be with his family, spend more time with his family and all that. So shout out to him for that. That's, that's a, great, uh, a great reason to retire, by the way. Um, so I, I got to respect somebody who's retiring to spend more time with their family. I love that. But anyway, he retired. So I believe it's Chris Horton that took over those duties. I, don't quote me on that, though. But with Jerry Rossberg retiring, we've seen with the special teams, besides the Wolfpack, Besides the Wolfpack, because I almost feel like those guys, I don't want to say they don't need coaching, but they got it. They got it. Um, but besides the Wolfpack, we've seen Ravens special teams not be so special. They gave up their first kick return in literally forever since 2000. Oh, uh, what did they say? 11? Or was it since 2015? I forgot when, but it's been a long time. Uh, they gave up their first kick return for a touchdown. Um, since a, a long time, <laughs> um, and they haven't been getting anything in the kick return game or the punt return game. So this may not even all be on a Cyrus Jones. But if you're not explosive, if you're not being explosive in a return game, then you, you got to hold on to the ball. You have to hold on to the ball because Harbaugh, again, being a special teams coach, he'll already be on you enough as it is, but... Like, he'll be watching you closely. If, if you're not doing anything special in the return game, he'll be watching you closely. But if you start, if you let that ball go, oh, man, that's, there's nothing that anybody can do for you at that point. And Cyrus Jones, uh, I think that that's when the writing was pretty much on the wall, uh, when he fumbled that ball in the Patriots game. And he was inactive the following game against the Bengals a few days ago. Um, and then they released him. They released him. Uh, and of course, uh, with him being inactive, that kind of we kind of saw signs like, ooh, uh oh, because what they because he they signed the Anthony Thomas too. When they signed the Anthony Thomas, I was like, oh yeah, yikes, yikes. Um, but anyway, so they they released him now. So now, and he's from Baltimore too. Uh, so that's 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 tough. That's got to be tough, especially you get released from your home team, like literally your home team. Um, but shout out to Cyrus. Thank you for uh, everything you did for the Ravens, especially uh, last year. Um, some good moments. A really good pun return against the Chiefs. And, of course, the pun return for the touchdown against the Raiders. So shout out to Cyrus Jones, man. Um, but, yeah, it's a, it's a tough, tough business, man. We always talk about that all the time, how tough of a business this is, because it is. It is. And it's only going to get tougher. So, Cyrus Jones, he's out now. He's out. So, again, uh, Dalen Mack, injured reserve, Cyrus Jones released, and Ufamba Kamalu, uh, he has been released as well. <clears throat> so, Ravens cleared up three roster spots, so they need to make three moves, and they did that. So, um, they brought in, well, first, uh, the... The name that a lot of Ravens fans may be a little more familiar with, um, besides Pico, uh, Eamon Marshall. Eamon Marshall, and we talked about this in the video where he was first designated to be, to be returning from injured reserve. Uh, we said that uh, no, the week 11 would be the deadline. 
And that's, uh, and I think I actually said in that video that they would probably do it week 11, but don't even matter. Uh, that this was the deadline to bring him up. They would either had to bring him up or they had to put him back on injured reserve. It was one or the other. And we knew they weren't putting him back on injured reserve because he was not even injured in the first place. It was a stash. We all know that. Everybody knows that. That's part of the business. They stashed Eamon Marshall. But they stashed him because they made, they thought about possibly bringing him back at a later date. And when they stashed him was also very important too because they stashed him after the, regu the, after the, uh, the regular season roster was made. So that means that they, they put him on injured reserve after the 53-man roster was set. So he would be eligible to return later on in the season, which is right now. So Eamon Marshall comes back. So the Ravens, they lose a corner, but they also gain a corner. And they've actually lost uh, multiple corners over the past couple of weeks because they recently uh, released Maurice Kennedy, and now they released uh, Cyrus Jones. And Cyrus Jones was not only a corner, he was a special teamer. Well, more so he was a special teamer and a corner because special teams was his priority. Now with Eamon Marshall, we'll see where, where they put him at. We'll see if he's even active because he, I mean, this would be his first, his first game. Like, whenever he does play, it'll be his first game, his very first game. So I'm not, I'm not even really expecting him to be active. I'm not expecting the Ravens to throw him out there like that. Okay, all right, Eamon Marshall, let's get it. Let's go. Like, if he was like a first-round pick, then maybe. But he's a fourth-round pick, which is still uh, reasonably high. Um, and somebody that can contribute as a... Uh, I mean, you can contribute at any, any round that you come through in. But expectations are different uh, f for the different rounds. So with an Eamon Marshall... Um, I would expect him primarily on special teams now. Primarily on special teams, on the kickoff unit, because uh, that's somewhere. Not saying that anybody can just jump in and play special teams, but that's somewhere if you really want to get somebody on the field, you can put them on special teams and they can get on the field right away, make some plays, just like that. Um, so, Eamon Marsh, I'm, I'm glad he's getting his chance now. And this is somebody that a lot of people often forget, because we had a few people ask for, um, a few people asked today, uh, should the Ravens sign Vernon Hargreaves, from, former first-round pick by the Bucks who just got cut today? I said no. I don't think so. Uh, and people were saying, oh, well, he, uh, he could come in and the veterans could help him, the Ravens could make him better. And while that's all true and that's all a possibility, the Ravens, they got to take care of Marcus Peters. They already have Marlon Humphrey. They got Tavon Young coming back. But somebody that a lot of people forget about is uh, Eamon Marshall. And I can understand why they forgot about him because he had been on injured reserve. But they got Eamon Marshall, too. So, with that being said, and they still got Anthony Averett. They can make him better, hopefully. Um, and they still got the draft as well. Vernon Hargreaves, not that he's going to command some crazy uh, salary or anything like that, but I think Ravens, um, I think they are good for now at the cornerback position, especially for this year. Especially right here, right now. But even for next year, uh, I, I, I think they will definitely just stick with what they got and also maybe do free agency a little bit. But I don't think they'll spend too much as on a cornerback. But anyway... Um, so Eamon Marshall is back now. With him being back, uh, that gives us even more depth at that position, and that is a position that we definitely need all the depth that we can possibly get. Uh, so great. I'm, I'm glad he's back. So hopefully he can show us stuff. I know a lot of people, especially y'all that, that, that watch college football, watch USC, my guy Tristan Daper, he's super excited for uh, Eamon Marshall. And there's been a few, a few of y'all, too, that said um, Eamon Marshall, is, he's good. He's good. So hopefully y'all aren't just saying that as Ravens fans, but y'all are being realistic about Eamon Marshall. So I'm looking forward to seeing him when he does uh, make his debut. Uh, and I'm, I'm thinking more along the lines of next year in the preseason is when we'll see him, we'll really see him at cornerback. I don't really expect to see much of him at cornerback this year, but hey, you never know. We'll see. Ravens have made a lot of surprises this, uh, this season. So, hey. Anyway, um, to the other signings. Uh, the other signings they did, uh, Justin Ellis and Dom Pico. Now, Dom Pico is some, some, somebody that a lot of Ravens fans who have been watching the Ravens for a little while are pretty familiar with. Because I remember Dom Pico um, from being on the uh, Bengals. And I, I just remember this guy with his, uh, his hair flowing. I remember him. I think he was number 94. But this guy had all the hair in the world. He was like the Bengals version of Troy Palomalu just on the defensive line. Um, and now he'll be with the Ravens. And yeah, Jeff Zerbiak talked about how they tried to sign him before, but they just couldn't agree to terms. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at his numbers. Oh, okay, he's, he's 34. 
Oh, he's Samoan. Okay, so it didn't, that means he's strong. Then. He's strong. Anyway, he's been playing since uh, 2006. All right, so he's been around the league for a little minute. Um, all right, so let's look at some of these numbers, man. I know a lot of people like looking at the sacks, and which is cool. I mean, he got a total of 20 career sacks, but he's a defensive tackle. Defensive tackle, they don't, unless you like Aaron Donald or somebody crazy like that, uh, Dominic and Sue, they don't get all the sexy numbers and all the sexy stats and all that stuff. Um, so he has 20, 20 career sacks. We're not going to go year by year. We're just going to do total. Um, he has uh, three forced fumbles, uh, five fumble recoveries. Um, anyway, he's, uh, he's been solid. He's been a solid guy. Uh, he played for Denver the last two years, um, and for all the other seasons, he played for uh, the Bengals. I didn't even remember that he was in Denver. If I wouldn't have looked that up, I definitely that, that wouldn't be on my mind at all, like at all whatsoever. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. But that, that gives us veteran presence. It's not just signing somebody who, oh, man, hopefully they'll get it or hopefully they'll be able to stick to the NFL. No, this is signing somebody that has veteran presence, that brings veteran presence, that knows the game, that's been through the game, and it's been in the game for a long time. So they can come in and know their responsibility, know their role, and just execute. Um, so and, and that goes to show that the Ravens, they feel like they are in win-now mode, which they obviously are. Um, and we've seen that throughout how they've been playing this season and some of the signings that they made. But now, um, they also signed a Justin Ellis, former Oakland Raider. So, let's take a look at uh, some of Justin Ellis' numbers, see where he's been. Um, and of course, numbers don't tell the whole story, but let's, uh, let's, let's, let's take a look. So, with Justin Ellis, okay, Justin Jamal Ellis, okay, uh, he is 28. So, and he, okay, he's been with Oakland the whole time. He's been with the Raiders the whole time. Uh, so he came in in 2004, uh, 2014, excuse me. And he started 14 games. Okay. Okay. He had one tackle for a loss. He only got six tackles for a loss in his career. But he, I guess last year, he didn't play in many games. I don't know if he was hurt or he just fell out of favor with the coaching staff or he just lost his spot. I'm not sure. But ever since he's came in the league, he has been starting. Says 2014, started 14 games. 2015, 9 games. 2016, he started 4 games. So I don't know what happened there. But then 2017, he started 14 games. So it's been a little, little flip-floppy. He has a half a sack from 2017. But you know what? His, with, with his stats, um, with his stats, his stats, they're not eye-popping. With his stats, they're not like, oh, man, oh, wow, he did this, he did that. No. But with this one, I mean, I, I, I got to trust the Ravens front office because they have earned my trust. They've earned it. I feel like we're playing that game. You know that game you play in school, the trust game? Well, some of y'all even play it at your uh, parties and stuff where you go like this, you drop back, and you, you just fall back like that. See? I trusted my chair that it wasn't going to break, even though I'm a little heavy. But when you play that game, it shows that you trust whoever's behind you to catch you. Now, with this, uh, this is me. And behind me is Ravens and free agency during the season. I trust them. I fall back and I trust them because they've already earned my trust through a Josh Burns, who I well, well I knew a little bit about, but I was like, uh, okay, when they sign him, it's been great. With an LJ Fort, who I didn't know anything about, and they signed him, it's been great. With a DeAnthony Thomas, he just made his first start last week. So we'll see how that goes. But I, I, I got a feeling that was going to work out too. But even with this one, with Justin Ellis... Oh, Jihad Ward. Jihad Ward has been somebody. I was like, um, with Jihad Ward, I didn't know who he was. I didn't even, I didn't even think he was going to be on the team for even a week after they signed him. Even four days after they signed him, I thought he was going to be cut. Because I thought he was a placeholder. But he's been holding his place on the roster. So, with their signings, I trust him. I trust him. They've earned my trust. So, Ravens, um, I'm sure that y'all got it. Um, I'm sure they, uh, they, they can handle it. So I have absolutely no fear, um, that these guys will come in and contribute, especially Don Pico. Um, cause we, we definitely need somebody cause the, and, and I mean, you can see in the game on Sunday with Siler and, uh, Wormley, they just, they, they're not Michael Pierce. And not saying that Don Pico is Michael Pierce, but getting somebody that's a veteran that got that experience that can come in and, okay, yeah, I, I know my assignment and whatnot. I, I got it. And he doesn't have to be the guy because Brandon Williams is the guy, but he just has to be a good supplemental guy. 
Now there's going to be a lot of supplementing he's going to need to do uh, because run defense, they go, they, they live and die by Brandon Williams and Michael Pierce. And with Michael Pierce uh, dealing with an injury, hopefully it's not too serious. But with these signings, it does look to be a little bit serious. But hopefully it's not too bad. But um, we definitely need him for the long haul. If, if we don't can't have him in this Texans game, I hope he's out there. But if he's still hurt, if he ain't ready to go, like, because, of course, a lot of these guys, they stay hurt. Um, I mean, not stay hurt, but they, they are hurting through the season. But if he's, like, if he's 90%, okay, cool. But if he's, like, 80% or 70, nah, just just let him rest this game. Let him come back the following week. So, because we got a we gotta tough stretch. We got a tough stretch. And um, we definitely going to need him down the road. So, anyway, Tim, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for spending uh, this time with me as we go, th we, as we went through the different Ravens transactions that they just made uh, all within the last hour. Um, so, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I thank you all. I hope you all are having a great Tuesday. I almost forgot what day it was. And just like that, I'm out.